As you might know, Quarka supports some standard enterprise APIs, for example, CDI, but not only in the very standard fashion, for example, it includes some non-standard features. And in this video, I want to show you the my most favorite um, features that Quarkus includes here and that we should take into um, account when we develop with, uh, with Quarkus. So I have a Quarkus application here that uses uh, version 1.3 and uh, JDK 13. And I'm just going to create some example beans for you, um, especially to show some CDI features. What I'm going to have here at first, I'm just creating a REST resource that makes it um, easy for us to access that. Um, I call that some coffee resource. And this is going to be an application scoped JAX REST path with some coffee, for example, as, as request path. And then, of course, I'm going to include a get uh, method for get. So that's supposed to be a string method, for example, a coffee. So I'm just going to return some coffee. And now I will return a string that I can create somewhere here. But I'm not going to create the string right in this class, but I'm going to inject it from somewhere else. So for example, I could inject a dependency that then creates a string. Or in my case, I want to show you producer methods in CDI. And in this case, I'm just I'm returning a value that I can inject somewhere so in this case i'm just injecting a string with coffee just for the sake of the example which of course needs to create it somewhere so i need to define a producer method for this and i'm going to define this in another class in another um, barista bean and now what's already interesting so quarkus only supports the annotated mode of cdi which means you cannot inject any bean any class it needs to be an annotated class with a scope such as dependent or request scope or application scope and in my case um, i'm just creating um, a producer method um, that at produces in my case just a string that i call make coffee and now for this example, I don't necessarily need to uh, define a scope here. I don't need to annotate that. That is one exception here um, with Quarkus. Despite the annotated mode, I can just write my uh, producer like this. And then I say, well, please return my coffee here. And now what I can do, this will now produce uh, my coffee. That is for now not that super interesting, but I can already try this out. Um, just to have a faster turnaround, I run Quarkus here with Quarkus column def in the dev mode. So then it uh, quickly starts up. And then in my case, I can um, enter my application. I can access my application by a curl, for example. I can say curl localhost, and then I call this some coffee, and then it says coffee at exclamation mark. All right, excellent. But for now, that is nothing uh, super um super spectacular so far what i can do uh, which is another non-standard feature actually i can add inject something without well necessarily typing add inject uh, let me give you an example if i would inject some um, configuration that here comes from microprofile config at config property for example i call this coffee mug i can inject some coffee mug so I believe every application should have a coffee mug uh, injected here, which is in my case just a um, Unicode symbol for a coffee mug. And that uh, comes from the properties, application properties in Quarkus. And now I can easily inject that and say, okay, please return this plus my mug here. So then you can well, already guess the example. Then I have coffee plus the mug exclamation mark and access this here in this way. But also what I can do, which is now uh, the extra feature, I can add inject something without actually add inject if already a qualifier is present at the injection point. So I don't need to write add inject if another qualifier and config property is a qualifier is present. So that is also sufficient. I can show you this. Let's quickly reload. And this also works. So this, by the way, reloads my application um, in the meantime because I run this development mode, which is very handy to um, try out stuff without waiting. And now what else I can do, I can show you another feature um, that is called default bean. So all of these features actually can have a look into uh, this guide that shows you what are the well specialities when it comes to CDI in Quarkus. And this is a very interesting read, by the way. So I definitely recommend um, you to have a look into this guide. 
um, if you develop with Quarkus, even or especially if you're familiar with uh, CDI. And it will uh, tell you about, well, a few things, for example, default beans. And that is a very interesting feature uh, that we can have. So for example, if I have my injection point for my string, this will be produced by my barista. But now let's say I want to have, well, another implementation, an alternative implementation that I now call, well, skilled barista, who not only brews um, good coffee, but actually very good coffee. Because it's a skilled barista. Then, of course, as you might imagine now, especially if you're familiar with uh, CDI, this runs into an error because it's now ambiguous which coffee to take because I have, well, one injection point and two producer methods and which one to take. I could call the, qualify this using a qualifier or in this case, I could say I use this default bean feature. So actually this barista is just creating a default bean, which might be helpful if you have a more complex application and then you basically define beans or in this case producer methods that might be somewhat overridden if you, if you want. And in this case, then I get my very tasty coffee and the normal regular barista is ignored. So then only the non um, default um, injection point, the, the producer method is taken here. So this will override the other one and not cause an ambiguous error in this case. So that is also due to the fact that uh, Quarkus doesn't fully support all of the CDI features, for example, specialized uh, beans. Uh, and things like that. You might want to have a read into uh, this guide, which I think is very interesting. Also, it um, tells you a little bit about uh, the internals, how it works and why, for example, you might um, prefer what I'm doing here, injection with uh, package private access and not, uh, not private, why this is um, actually better on the generated code instead of choosing another, um, another modifier or using the, um, or you, of course, you can also use the conduct, constructor based injection, what you um, perform more. And also about the initialization when your beans are actually being created, that's also interesting. So um, they're lazy by default, which in this case, depending on the scope, well, changes uh, the, the time um, when your bean will actually be created. Because usually when you inject uh, something in your injection point, you only have a client proxy and not necessarily the actual instance of your class that you write. And you can have a read through that when they're actually being uh, created, being instantiated, depending on the scope that you, uh, that you use. So this is something I think is very interesting. And especially um, I'm a fan of the uh, injection without at inject um, or um, these default beans, it just makes it a little bit more pragmatic um, to use these features of CDI within Quarkus. And that's a, a pattern I generally uh, like about the, um, about the technology that it's very pragmatic to use and cares a lot about the features that you might uh, wanna use or that you might uh, need uh, when creating enterprise applications. Thanks a lot for watching.